What's up guys, Mike here, coming at you from the Mushroom Farm, and I got a great video for you guys today. So today, we're going to talk about the 30 tools in the Mycology Lab that I would not be without, okay? So, those of you just now tuning into this channel, my name is Mike, I'm a mushroom farmer, I've been farming gourmet mushrooms 9 years, this is my full time job. Here's just a few clips and pictures of some of my grows over the years. But basically, I grow all these mushrooms here on my farm, and I sell them at farmer's markets and to high-end restaurants. We're actually standing in my mushroom lab here at my brand new mushroom farm that I built myself in western Colorado. And I want to say we have a subscriber giveaway going on on this channel right now. And you can look down in the description box below and you can find the link to the subscriber giveaway. But I'm giving away $600 worth of cultures, okay? So check that out. All you got to do is click the link, go to the video, make a comment, and you're entered. You have until noon on Thanksgiving, Rocky Mountain time, to enter in the subscriber giveaway. And I will be announcing the winner on Thanksgiving at noon, all right? And if you want to get more mushroom and farming videos like this, we're doing daily uploads. I always got something good coming. We have over 200 videos on mushroom farming and mushroom cultivation on this channel. So make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. But anyway, on to today's video. We're going to talk about, like I said, the 30 tools that I use in my mycology lab on a regular basis. And... I just want to start off and say there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but these are definitely the ones that I for sure would not be without. So let's go ahead, let's get into this. Okay, now I want to say there is no hierarchy or anything like that as I'm talking to you about these tools. These are just the ones that I use on a regular basis and keep in mind I've been doing this nine years full time as my job. So these are the ones I just do not go without. And I know 30 items is a lot, but we're going to talk about everything from like agar ingredients, liquid culture ingredients, tools to make both of those. We're gonna talk about using tools for transfers or long-term culture storage. We're also gonna talk about sterilization equipment, bag sealing, all sorts of stuff, okay? So we're gonna cover a lot of things in this video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up each item and go one by one, and I'm gonna to talk to you guys about it and how I use it. And then at the end of this video too, I'm gonna to talk about a couple little bonus things you could potentially throw in if you wanted, but it's nothing I actually use on a regular basis. But these are the items I use pretty much every single, if I don't use it every single day, it's for sure every single week. But a lot of these we're using every single day here. So anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so the first item I'm gonna to talk to you guys about today is the laminar flow hood. And that's this big item right here behind me, these two white filters. So basically, I built this laminar flow hood myself. Look back at some of my old videos about how to build a laminar flow hood, but I actually built this one myself. This is the third one that I've built in my mushroom growing career so far. But you can also buy filter fan units or use a still air box if you want just another way to do your sterile work. But basically, I prefer a laminar flow hood because this is where I work in front of every single day to do my sterile work and my lab work. Okay, so number one, laminar flow hood. Next up, basic pressure cooker. Okay, so a basic pressure cooker or an autoclave. You could use either one, but you're going to need this to sterilize any growing medium, any liquid cultures, any agar, any tools, stuff like that. So you're going to need a pressure cooker or an autoclave. All right, number three little alcohol spray bottle, all right? This is my favorite thing to use just to wipe stuff down. So whenever I'm getting ready to just do a little bit of work, I might be wiping off a jar of spawn or a jar of liquid culture, bag of spawn, it could be anything, but I like to keep a nice spray bottle full of isopropyl alcohol. I use 70% isopropyl alcohol, and this is what I use for all my sanitation needs. But number three, you're gonna need some alcohol. Number four, we're going to jump right into our petri dishes or agar. So number four is going to be petri dishes. These are sterile petri dishes. I buy them by the box of 500 or so typically, but these are some really nice ones. They are, see what brand is this? Aka Scientific, okay? This is just what I've been using. I like them. They work good. Number five, it's time to fill those petri dishes up. So agar, agar, this is a main ingredient in our agar mixtures. Whether it's malt extract agar or potato dextrose agar, you are going to need some agar powder, okay? So number five, agar powder. Number six, still talking about agar. So potato flakes. These are dehydrated potato flakes. This is a, another ingredient for your agar plates or your potato dextrose agar. So this is another thing you should keep in your mycology lab. Number six, potato flakes. 
Number seven, corn sugar or dextrose, all right? So when I'm talking about using dextrose for liquid culture or for agar, this is it right here. I buy it by the 10 pound bag. You'll either call this dextrose or corn sugar, but number seven, dextrose. This is what you want. Number eight, I'm pretty sure you make beer with this, but we're growing mushrooms. So this is pale ale, dry malt extract, okay? Or light malt extract. But when I'm talking about malt extract, this is what I get when I'm putting it in my Petri dishes or my MEA, my malt extract agar. I also like to put this in my liquid culture. I like one to two grams of this per 1,000 milliliters of water in my liquid culture. But anyway, number eight, light malt extract. Number nine, polypropylene cups, okay? So these are autoclavable pitchers, all right? 1,000 milliliters. And this is actually what I like to sterilize my agar in. And I'll talk to you guys about how I sterilize this in these cups and some other videos. But these are one of my favorite things to use. I know some guys like flasks, but I prefer these polypropylene cups. While we're talking about vessels, number 10, okay? You need to have a jar to make some liquid culture, all right? So you can see I've got the top of this fitted with an injection port and a 0.2 micron syringe filter. There's so many different ways you can set this up. I'll show you several different ways you can set this up. But this is a basic liquid culture jar just within a, with a silicone in injection port and a syringe filter with a stir bar in it. So number 10, liquid culture jar. Number 11, so when you guys have all that liquid culture, you're going to need a magnetic stirrer to stir it up. So what this does, you just turn this sucker on, crank her up, and it's going to spin that magnetic little stir bar inside the liquid culture jar. But anyway, you are definitely going to need a magnetic stirrer. Number 11. Number 12, there's probably a lot of different ways guys do this, but this is just how I do it. But anyway, a sink drain, and what are these? You guys know what those are? Those are syringe caps, okay? So what I do is I sterilize these syringe caps, sterilize the sink drain, put it in the jar or over the jar like that. I have the jar sterilized. But this is basically how I cap my syringes. I just screw the cap on then, all right? But bam, this little apparatus. So we're gonna count the syringe caps 12, 13 for the sink drain, and we'll just say 14 for some more jars, okay? Because you can always use the jars on your mushroom farm. You will go through, I have so many jars, I have hundreds of jars, so you can never have enough jars. So anyway, 12, 13, 14, right here. Number 15, we got some nitrile gloves right here. Always use protection in the lab. Number 16, syringes, okay? So I like to use 10 milliliter syringes. I buy these by cases, actually. I bought 1,600 the other day. So you're gonna need to get yourself some syringes when you go over to my website and you get some liquid cultures to make yourself. You're gonna wanna load some up yourself and you're gonna want some 10 milliliter syringes, all right? So number 16, syringes. Number 17, racks. I like these work racks to work on in front of the flow hood. We got racks on racks on racks here, boy. But anyway, get yourself some racks, number 17. Number 18, aluminum foil, all right? I recommend the heavy duty, actually, but you're gonna use this to wrap up tools when you're pressure cooking them. You're gonna use this to cover the lids of jars so you don't get excessive moisture in there if you're using like a polyfill filter or anything like that. Sometimes I just cover up some jars if I wanna sterilize a few jars in my PC, but aluminum foil is a great tool to have on your farm. Number 18. Number 19, a basic Sharpie, okay? You're gonna use this to label Petri dishes, you can label slants, you can label your mushroom bags, you're always labeling something, okay? But I like using a Sharpie. Some people also like to use wet, wet markers, like a wet paint marker. They call them wet dry markers or whatever, but I had an employee that would mark my bags for me sometimes, and he had one of these. I actually don't have one anymore, but I should get one myself. I myself always use a Sharpie though, number 19. Number 20, scale. Everybody needs a scale, all right? So this will be handy when you're weighing your ingredients for your liquid culture or your agar, stuff like that. And you can also weigh mushrooms on it. Number 20, gotta get a scale. Number 21, tweezers, all right? So every good mycologist is gonna have a set of tweezers. This is gonna be nice if you're doing some cloning and you wanna take a little piece of tissue out of there and put that on a petri dish. Or maybe you wanna take a little piece of grain or something like that and put that on a petri dish. But anyway, when you gotta pick up something small, it's nice to have a little tweezers. Number 21. Number 22, scalpel, all right? Scalpel and some extra surgical blades. My dad always said every good man's always got a knife and a tape measure, all right? Number 22, scalpel. 
Number 23, dental picks or a little hook, okay? So these are also great for whether you're doing some cloning or you need to pick up a syringe cap, grab it, and then put it on your syringe when you're capping up some liquid culture. So this is one of my favorite tools right here. Number 23, the dental pick or the hook. Number 24, centrifuge tubes. Throw some 24s on it. But anyway, centrifuge tubes. These are 50 milliliter. I like to put sterile water in these, and these are for long-term culture preservation. So what I will do is I will grow out a culture on a Petri dish, allow that culture to grow out, and I will take the leading edge of the mycelium. I will cut a ring around it, and I will make little cubes of that agar with that leading edge of the mycelium in it, and I will plop them in here for long-term storage. So number 24, centrifuge tubes. Number 25, spawn bags, all right? So these are unicorn bags, specifically a 3T with a 0.2 micron filter patch. So when you're making your best no prep grain spawn recipe, you're gonna wanna pick up some of these 0.2 micron filter patches, spawn bags for your spawn, all right? Number 25, spawn bags. Number 26, who showed up to the barbecue? Everyone's gonna need a torch in their mycology lab. This is gonna be great to sterilize your tools, whether it's your picks, your scalpels, stuff like that. You can also use a nifty induction coil, but me, myself, I like fire. Number 26, get yourself a torch. Number 27, electrical tape. Why are we using electrical tape in the mycology lab, Mike? Well, I'll tell you, I like to use electrical tape to wrap my petri dishes. Are you serious, bro? Yup, check this out. Look at that, look at that perfect seal. Now, I actually like this over parafilm because I feel like you never get any little pinholes in it or anything like that. It's actually pretty cheap if you buy this stuff in bulk, but anyway, number 27, electrical tape. Number 28, spore swabs or sterile cotton tipped wood applicators, okay? So you're gonna wanna pick yourself up a little pack of these and then that way you can get your own spore swabs that you make yourself, okay? So you'll basically open one of these up, you'll swab the hymenium or the spore producing surface of the mushroom, collect your spores, and then you'll have them on your spore swabs right here and you can streak your own Petri plates. So number 28, get yourself some swabs. Number 29, an impulse sealer, all right? So this is actually a magnetic impulse sealer. I use this to seal all my mycology bags. Basically, when you shut this, a magnet will hold it down the little heating filament or whatever you call that will heat up. It seals the bag. Once the timer goes down, you can actually see that. Look at that. You can adjust the heating and the cooling. Pow, it'll release the magnet and you got a nice sealed bag. So number 29, everyone needs an impulse sealer. Number 30, sterile needles. You need these for all sorts of things on your mycology farm. I prefer a 16 gauge, okay? That way you can do needle biopsies with a sterile needle if you want. This also works great when you have really thick mycelium or really thick liquid culture. So I make some really thick liquid cultures here on my farm. So I like to use the 16 gauge needles. When you guys are picking up my liquid cultures on the Black Friday sale over at my website, I include some sterile 16 gauge needles with every order of liquid culture. But number 30, make sure you got some sterile needles. Okay, bonus round 31, 32, 33. So 31, you can get yourself one of these infrared temp guns. I don't really use any of these too much because I just go by feel nowadays. I'm pretty good and I can tell exactly like what temp my agar is and I can just pour it by hand and I don't have to check it. I'm pretty good. But anyway, you can get one of these to check your temperature of your agar before you pour it. Also 32, you could pick up some peptone. I use peptone actually in all my liquid cultures. I put in one to two grams of peptone for every 1,000 milliliters of water. I just misplaced my peptone right now and I can't find it. So number 32, peptone, and then number 33, masks, okay? If you're a heavy breather or something like that and you're afraid you're gonna contaminate something in front of your flow hood when you're doing your stair work, pick yourself up some masks. I actually don't use them too often. I'm really cautious about my breathing. When I'm in front of the flow hood, I just breathe very easily through my nose. I actually, if I ever have someone here working with me or something like that, I don't talk while I'm working or anything like that in front of the flow hood. It's actually really funny. I'm like super focused, really quiet, and just really easy with my breathing. But anyway, you can also get a mask, okay, if you're afraid you're going to contaminate something. But those are the 30 main tools I like to use in my lab. And like I said, three bonus ones. I want to thank all you guys for watching this today. If you guys have any questions for me or anything like that you want to drop down in the comment section, drop something down in the comment section for me. Also, if you have any suggested videos or just anything you want me to make a video on, be sure to drop that below in the comment section. I got a lot of cool videos in the pipeline for you guys that are coming. Also, remember, we got the Black Friday sale coming up, so stay tuned for that. And if you have not entered my subscriber giveaway, I have the link to enter that down in the description box below. 
All you have to do is click the link, go over to that video, make a comment in the comment section. Any comment will get you entered into my subscriber giveaway. And remember, I'm giving away $600 worth of liquid culture. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching tonight. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you.